Reading with your kids. Hola, Niha, Kinichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you so very much for being part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Our guest today is our friend, Leslie Wall is coming back. She is the author of Where You Lead and a number of other great young adult titles. She's here to share with us some of her favorite suggestions for books about friendship. We also have a very special announcement. We have a brand new Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. We're going to tell you all about that book towards the end of the show. But first, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band, Battle of the Bands by Linda Phelps. Do you know a tween or a teen who struggles with stress and anxiety? There are so many kids out there dealing with these issues. Well, if you answered yes, let me suggest a great book that could offer them some great strategies to help them deal with their issues. It's The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band by Linda Phelps. Johnny and his brother Drummer Boy are excited to compete in the Battle of the Bands. They have two months to get the band prepared, but everybody is like so nervous. Johnny has promised himself that he will conquer his anxiety this year and start to have fun. And you know, with the help of his friends, he just might be able to do it. The story captures the emotions, fears, and excitement of the preteen years. It's a difficult time for everyone, but the story opens up a window of understanding as each kid shares their thoughts about fitting in, making friends, and the new and very unsettling feeling of being attracted to girls. This is a fantastic read for all families, but especially families who know somebody who is struggling with stress and anxiety. The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band, The Battle of the Bands, is available on Amazon or by going to Linda's website, johnnypocket.net. The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band, Battle of the Bands by Linda Phelps. This episode of the podcast is also brought to you by The Nature Club, a series of nature-based books for middle grade readers by author and wildlife biologist Rachel Mazur. I love nature. I love the fact that me and Augie the Wonder Dog get to run around in our big backyard here in Reedville, which is right across the street from Fowl Meadow, a beautiful wildlife sanctuary on the edge of Boston. You know, the Nature Club series is a great, great series that'll get your kids connected with nature. The Nature Club is made up of a diverse group of five friends. Now, each book in the series tells the story of one of the kids and how they approach a challenge of growing up. Now, these challenges include moving, parents divorcing, and health issues. Their stories each run in parallel with stories about wildlife and the challenges they face, including migration, metamorphosis, and foraging for seasonal foods. My my dog, Augie, is foraging for chipmunks in the backyard all the time. Each book ends with the kids finding ways to take simple actions to help themselves and the wildlife they love. Readers learn about the natural history of birds, monarch butterflies, bears, raccoons, frogs, and bobcats. At the end of each book, there are discussion questions and a section on additional information about the featured animal. For more information, you can find The Nature Club on Facebook or on Instagram at The Nature Club Books. Or you can go to the website, natureclubbooks.com. And last but not least, this episode of the podcast is also sponsored by Noah, Noah Source by Elaine Kylie Kearns. I love this book. You know, if you listen to the podcast that I love to have fun and I love to read books that are fun and Noah, Noah Source is a fun, fun book. Do you know someone who is a Noah Source? Is your child a Noah Source? Does your child ever have one of those days where they wake up and their answer to everything is no? Well, have I got a picture book for you? Noah Noah Source by Elaine Kylie Kearns. Noah Noah Source woke up feeling very no. No to brushing his teeth, no to eating breakfast, and definitely no to playing with his little brother. Things only get worse when Noah goes for a walk and discovers that the relentlessly cheerful Toby Rex, Brian Brontosaurus, and Ava Ceratops are following him. Together, the group starts a bona fide dino parade that even Noah cannot resist. This lighthearted, whimsical tale will have readers laughing along at Noah and his friends, as well as their own bad moods. This hilarious book pairs two of little kids' favorite things, saying no and dinosaurs. 
Adults can also relate to waking up on the wrong side of the bed and feeling very, no, all day. Noah Noah's Source is available on Amazon and on Elaine's website, ElaineKylieCurrents.com. As summer is winding down, we hope you had a fantastic summer. School is going to be starting and our kids are going to be navigating friendships. And, you know, on one level you think, well, friendships, kids, that, that comes naturally to kids. But actually, it, it can be really tricky for kids. So we have our friend Leslie Wallace here to talk to us about some great books that we can sit down with our middle grade kids and our teenage high school kids that uh, talk about friendships and talk about values. Please welcome back to the show the author of Where You Lead, Leslie Wall. Leslie, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. I think this is such an important topic, the idea of friendships, because friendships, I I don't think friendships have ever been easy. They're especially challenging in middle school and in high school. And um, and, and it's the time of life where kids, you know, in third grade, when Sally doesn't play with Susie, Susie might come home and cry to her mom about that. But when that happens in middle school and high school, uh, it kids aren't that quick to come home and talk to their folks about it. Yeah, and everybody wants friendships. I mean, mm-hmm. that's just a, something that everybody's searching for, and it can be really hard, especially these uh, those ages. Mm-hmm. People can be kind of cruel and mean. And I've noticed also recent, lately, maybe because of our social media, um, quantity. Mm-hmm. Versus quality seems to be a thing. People want more friends and more likes and so forth. Uh, but the, if you have a good friendship, that's more important. And uh, sometimes that's learning how to be a good friend yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, really important. And uh, and it is. You're, you're absolutely right. You need to learn how to be a good friend. And you also need to, I, I think in the course of learning how to be a good friend, you're also learning the type of friendships that, that you want to have in your life. You know, you, you know what you kind of come to expect or, or know what you want to expect from your friends. Yeah. And that's kind of something you have to learn because often you want, people seem to want the, the popular person to be their friend. or But sometimes it's some unique friendships that come into your lives that really make a difference. People you might not have expected to become friends with uh, turn out to be some very special in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, my my best friend, I remember uh, very clearly. We 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 met on the job, and 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 he was uh, a few years older than me and more experienced. And then and suddenly I was supposed to be his supervisor. And I remember going, "Ah, oh, this isn't going to work. This is going to be terrible." But but we ended up being great friends and uh and that was i don't want to say it out loud but that was like 45 years ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what books what books come into our lives out? yes yes what books should we check out with our our teens and middle schoolers okay the first one i have is called mandy lamb and the full moon uh, by corinna turner who i've talked about before uh-huh. she's a great author um and she often writes um, more at high school level, but this is um, a middle grade book, um, and it's Mandy Lamb. It's a very unique uh, book about friendships and a unique friendship, in fact. So it's a tale of Mandy, who is the world's first half girl, half lamb, and James, who's another human hybrid with a dangerous secret. Mm. Now, Corinna Turner, she always has incredible worlds she creates in her fantasy novels, her dystopian, and so forth. So this is another one that uh, just makes this really unique kind of world. So Mandy and James are both 12, and both have had a lot to deal with in their young lives, as you could imagine, since they're not totally all human. Um, their unique struggles with fitting in is a topic that, a lot of kids in this age group can relate to. And I really love 
hearts that showed how important it is to have a strong faith um, while you're going through all this. Um, but what makes this novel really intriguing is the serious moral dilemmas that Corinna Turner introduces. Uh, this is one of the things, like I said, I always enjoy in her books. She brings up important societal topics, mm-hmm. um, things that you don't see other people writing about. Um, this book is the same. It is talking about um, controlling and manipulating genetics. Mm-hmm. Um, however, since this is written for older elementary and middle school students, the oral moral implications of the topic really are only touched upon, mm-hmm. which leaves families an opportunity to delve into the subject matter um, as much as they would like. But it is interesting because, as I said, she's half human, half lamb, but it had started out trying to uh, help people by adding uh, genes that could, uh, you know, affect a future problem. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was interesting how you could see things escalating, getting out of control. But at the center of the story is this friendship that they help each other through. Wow. It, that's, that certainly is a, a big topic that families um, probably should be talking to their kids about. All this all this technology and communications and in healthcare and uh, it, it seems like um, you know the technology is really there before we figure out how to use it. That's very true. You kind of jump in sometimes without thinking through all the consequences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So that is uh, Mandy Lamb and the Full Moon. What a great title! I love that. Yeah, she's very clever at one. Awesome. <laughs> all right. So what else do we have? Okay, the second one's called The Gate, um, and I hope I don't mess up her name too much, but it's Nancy Carabio Belanger. The last name's B-E-L-A-N-G-E-R. Um, so it's a YA novel, and it's written actually from the perspective of a grown-up Joshua as he looks back and remembers a life-changing time in his past when he was a kid. Mm. I was really enjoyed this book, and I just couldn't wait to see how the story played out. So it's a friendship on this one is between Josh, who is a snarky teenager, and an elderly gentleman that he re- reluctantly has to befriend, whose name is Pi. So as a school assignment, he has to go, Joshua has to go and work at a retirement center and become friends with somebody. So the relationship between these two unlikely friends is really touching. Your heart goes out to both of them. Like I said, Josh is just a snarky teen, and the smart aleck language is just absolutely brilliant. It's a fantastic character. And the pie is this old, curmudgeonly old man who's just kind of cranky and grumpy. And you could totally feel Joshua's angst, his anger as he has to deal with, he has a problem in his past, he, his father had died, so he's dealing with that, and then he has the school assignment, and his mother's bugging him, you know, he just has all this stuff going on, and over time, Pi kind of, they help each other. Um, so it's a powerful book about healing and God's love that can work within us, uh, and there's many great topics of discussion also, but uh, just a very special friendship. Awesome, awesome. So that's The Gate by Nancy. And, and you broke up when you were telling us the middle name. So Nancy? Uh, Carabio, uh-huh. C-A-R-A-B-I-O. Okay, so Nancy Carabio Belanger, correct? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Great book yeah. to check out. And that's um, th- those relationships between the generations, I think, they're really important, but they also are very difficult to navigate for kids. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, but you, I think you can learn so much through um, the different generations, especially for kids to see, you know, these older people that they see actually have some interesting backgrounds and histories, mm-hmm. and they can learn from them. Absolutely. Okay, so what's the third book that we're going to check out? And the third one is Sunflowers in a Hurricane by Anne M. Fay, F-A-Y-E. And this is another multi-generational um, story. 
And it's actually told from three different characters. George is this elderly neighbor who's grieving the wife that had passed away a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And then there's Cheryl, who's a single mom, um, and she returns home with her daughter to her hometown. She had fled years ago amidst scandal and trauma, uh, but she has to come home. And then her daughter is Ruth, who's a middle school age girl, Mm -hmm. and who's... She's trying to understand her mother's anger and her overprotectiveness, as well as what happened in her background. Uh, so the circumstances kind of meld these three characters and their lives together as they're all kind of dealing with their family and personal issues. And it's mostly told from the young teen's perspective, mm-hmm. which will, of course, connect with all the younger readers. But I th- like I said before, I think it's wonderful for them to understand the inner thoughts and personal feelings of the older gentleman mm-hmm. and the mom as well. Because mm-hmm. kids might not understand that the parents also have things going on in their past and in their lives. So it's kind of it's neat to see how their struggles, they could help each other through them. Yeah. You know, one of the things I notice is that here in in the States, it's it, it seems like the, the separation between the generations is much more pronounced. Uh, when, when I tour, and I haven't toured all over the world, but when I tour Puerto Rico um, and when I toured Panama, in those cultures it was very common to see older people at a concert with young people and you know different mm-hmm. generations doing more things together. And here we seem to be very segmented. This is just for young people. This is just for older people. And uh, and I think that that's I, – I, I don't like that. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just think it's I, – I don't think it's healthy for anyone. I think uh, it's important for, for you know, people my age, you know, pre- approaching 100 to have relationships with young people and, and vice versa. Yeah, so it's all connected, and to realize you have something in common with mm-hmm. each other mm-hmm. is a great thing. I like to explore that those kind of relationships in all my books too, yeah. the older and younger generations. Well, speaking of your book, I'm I'm wondering uh, where you lead is is that a book that that talks about friendships? Uh, yeah, and that one has several different kinds. There's a friendship between the two main teenage characters. Um, Eve and Nick, and they have a, as all my books do, a mystery that they're on. But um, both of them also feel called to um, create a relationship and a friendship with different people. Um, Nick is with another teen who's struggling, uh, but Eve is her neighbor, an elderly neighbor that um, is, you know, shut in kind of in her apartment and struggles with um, wanting to... I don't know, be with people, mm-hmm. and and so Eve kind of helps her, and they have develop an interesting friendship there. Like I said, it's always one that I enjoy because you learn things from each other. You know, mm-hmm. Eve learns from this older woman, and this woman learns from her too. So it's really, it's, I think it's a great way to tell the story. That's wonderful. And one of the ways that we can learn, and I'm sure one of the ways that that uh, that Leslie has learned, is being part of. Catholic Teen Authors.com. Did I say that right? Oh, Catholic Teen Books.com. Yes. And actually, personally, uh, the friendships from those other authors has really helped me grow in my writing and in my faith. It's just amazing. Like we were talking about, friendships can become in the most unexpected places. And it's amazing how you can just find the kindred spirit sometimes. Um, and grow in different ways that you wouldn't expect. Absolutely. Well, I am really thankful that we, that Leslie and I have become friends over the last year or so, and she's become a regular part of the Reading With Your Kids podcast, and we're so happy about that. So definitely check out catholicteenbooks.com, and also make sure you check out Leslie's books, uh, not only Where You Lead, uh, but also Unexpected Role and The Perfect Blind Side. And uh, am I right? You're working on a sequel to The Perfect Blind Side? Uh, yes, working on it right now. It's in the final edit, so hopefully it will be out in a few months. That's awesome. Well, 
we will have you back to tell us all about that. Great. Thank you so much. We've been talking to Leslie Wall today about some great books our teens can read with us about friendships. Leslie, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Talk to you later. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be PJ McElvain. She'll be here to tell us all about her beautiful book, Little Lena and the Big Table. Speaking of beautiful books, we are celebrating our latest Reading With Your Kids certified great read. It is Being Small Is Not So Bad After All by Lori Olinsky. You know, being short, being tall, let's face it, we all have trouble with our height. We're all somewhat different, but some kids can be mean and know how to trigger those pain points. Being Small Isn't So Bad After All is a perfect book that will help vertically challenge kids to understand that being smaller than others has its own advantages. Being Small Isn't So Bad After All by Lori Alinsky is a children's rhyming picture book for children ages 3 to 7 years old. This wonderful book tells the story of a girl who is sidelined by her lack of height. Her friends make call her all sorts of names, such as Munchkin, Shorty, and Peanut. And, and being the shortest kid in her class makes her upset. Well, Mom comforts the little girl but, but while explaining to her that being short doesn't have to be a disadvantage and presents her with some great and hilarious advantages that only small people can have because of their height. I love this book because I am vertically challenged and always have been. And it really is. A, it's, a, it's a fun book. Hats off to Lori Olinsky, the latest Reading With Your Kids certified great read. Before we go, we want to thank the people who made today's show so very wonderful. We want to thank our friend Leslie Wall. Be sure to check out her great book, The Perfect Blind Side, and also Where You Lead. We also want to thank our sponsors, Elaine, Kylie Kearns. Check out Noah North Source. You will be laughing, laughing, laughing with this great, great children's book. We also want to thank Rachel Mazur, wildlifeologist and author of The Nature Club, a great series of nature-based books for middle grade readers. And, of course, we want to thank Linda Phelps. She is the author of The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band. It's a great, great book for kids, uh, for all kids, but especially tweens who may be struggling with stress and anxiety. I want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan. Be sure to check out her blog at readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all of the support she gives me. And I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.